So as I'm playing through the new Guild Wars 2 expansion, we are on the hunt for this massive titan who has appeared and now is causing all sorts of problems and troubles and issues with our bare necessity buddies. We have to deliberate with the rest of Tyria first before going forward, and of course someone suggests a nuclear option right out the gate. Then we find possibly one of the biggest reveals in this story so far, only for our problems with the said titans to start spiraling out of control. Here's what happened. Also, please note that this series is a playthrough of the Guild Wars 2 Janthier Wilds expansion. Some mild spoilers ahead. So we pick up this part of the journey back at Lion's Arch, meeting up with the Alliance members. Basically, we are here because a Titan has been spotted. Titans are essentially demonic type creatures from the mist that are made of like twisted souls. The big bad one that we've already met was Greer the Blightbringer. Well, this is a huge problem, of course, because they are literally draining the life force from the Code and Lowlands. Hence, our positively big problem. In walks Olivia, the human necromancer, who then just straight up suggests that we use the Scepter of War, which is essentially a powerful ancient artifact that could defeat the Titans or completely obliterate everything else in the surrounding area. Eh, who knows? So it all gets put up to a vote. Either we get voluntold to go back to Janthir and research more about these titans and investigate everything that they're doing, or we just nuke the whole damn place and go home. Damn, we don't even have like a third option. Well, the council votes on this, and they give us the option to cast our own vote, but everyone has already whipped and nay-nayed for me to go to do more research. Like, come on, Arena, now be bold enough to make a meaningful choice, and it changes the story. Well, so now we get back to Bear Country to get ready to head out to Janthier Isles, only find Poised Arrow, well, really not so poised. He's panicking like Pooh Bear without his honey, because his mentor, Fading Aurora, has left the village and gone to deal with the Blightbringer directly to end all of this right now. I'm not gonna lie, I kinda actually like her boldness. Let's just let's just get in there. Boys Arrow tries to say, Oh, well, I'm I'm gonna go and do this, but if you want to to come with me, that 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 would be kinda cool. Like, please please, I'm actually just a very scared bear. Well, we arrive in Janthier Isles to find an entire path of dead and dying strangers, or well, blighted beasts. Really, Aurora must have come through in like wrecked house because these guys got worked over. <laughs> We progress a little bit further and we find this lone elementalist bear fighting this massive rotten creature titan. Like what the hell is this thing? I also need to call this out because this isn't this isn't factual. They, they, she has plot armor on right now because there's no way in hell that elementalist is standing toe to toe with a boss that size for so long. I'm just saying from experience uh, the math ain't mathing. Well, we have to clean out some of the titan spawn as well as some of the rotten materials nearby because it's giving Big Blighty Boy a big buff. And after about three minutes of murking anything that moves, we get it done. Now, apparently, we need to go play the other GW2 game. And that, of course, yes, is Garden Wars 2. <laughs> we have to go and plant a bunch of seeds to weaken the Blightbringer. But again, I gotta really say that I'm, I'm actually really liking the choice of being Silvari here because it kind of fits with the aesthetic. Like, we're fixing nature and fighting these, like, anti-natural creature things. I mean, it, it's pretty cool. Well, after running around and playing Stardew Valley, we finally get the barrier to break around our big blighty boy, and now it's time to take him down. Aurora then yells at Greer, who is about to attack Pokey Bear, demanding that he turns around and faces her. Well, she starts glowing with all sorts of mystic Dragon Ball Z energy, and she slams the ground and it creates this giant arcane sigil on the floor, and she just goes complete beast mode. No pun intended, because she is a bear. Immediately, we know who the hell she is. She is Waiting Sorrow, the Lost Astral Ward Mage, the big bad rogue wizard that created the Heart of the Obscure, one of the most threatening mages in the entirety of Tyria. And she's just been living as a bear. <laughs> she's been hiding here the whole time and mentoring the chieftain's son. All right, that's that's pretty damn cool, not gonna lie. All right, that was a cool cinematic. All right, Arena Net, I'm feeling it, feeling it. Well, we start fighting Greer, and I have to say that I'm actually really loving my Spear Mirage. I've stacked all my clones to do increased strike damage, so now I can keep them up, basically maximum uptime while absolutely smashing into this guy. Like, I'm sure there's a better way to min-max it, but like right now I'm just loving the damage that I'm able to put out without being like an optimal build. 
probably would be better suited if I went like Spear Chronomancer of some re regard. Well, after dancing around with this legendary mob for about, oh, I don't know, three or four minutes, we finally get him down. And as he's dying, he says, I'm choking on the weight of my own dejection. We also heard during the fight something about settling a score. I don't know what that is supposed to mean, but remember, Waiting Sorrow is incredibly, like, old. Don't let the bear fur fool you. Well, she explains who she is, and that she is in fact an ex-Astral Ward member, and we just bluntly say that she's a rogue wizard who's wanted. What, what else is there to say? Well, we have to say that, of course, she is dangerous and take our precautions, but after what I watched her do to the big rotten tree boy, we probably would have been trash canned long before if she really, really wanted to. Well, Pokidoki is not okay, and he apparently is having big boy feelings. Like, his whole life is falling to shambles with reveals, but I just have to say this, like, <laughs> first time? <laughs> well, we confirm that there is another Titan farting around here, so now it's gonna have to be dealt with. Basically, buckle up, Buttercup, we got crap to clean up again. The poor commander really just can't catch a break anywhere he goes. Well, we get to the Janthir Sentry to catch up with Pogibear, but apparently he is already out collecting his picnic baskets. We do, however, run into his dad, and his dad just feels like that type of guy that you just don't want to lie to. Like, he, he legit asks in a sad voice, like, is my son okay? And we're like, well, he's not dead. So that's a pretty good thing, right? He simply says, ah, oh, okay. And then some more sad bear noises. Like, sheesh, this is, this is kind of brutal. I'm also going to call it, it, like, spoilers. I don't know if I even need to say that. I think either the dad or the son is going to die before the end of the story. I'm just, I'm betting on it. Right now, I would say the dad, but who knows? Well, we check in with Grace by Fire, and it seems that all the Coden on the island are in need of help setting up camp and dealing with all the creatures of this land. But first, we need to go scout the terrain and report it back to Gracie Bear. So legit, let me just say that this whole damn place is massive. The Sentry is huge for a map. I don't know if it's, if it's actually bigger than the other maps, but it just feels bigger. I also try to sneak in a nearby event just by participating at the end for the credit. I got gold too. <laughs> well, we are exploring everything that we can about this island and finding more about the land. The big thing here is the remnants of the White Mantle and Murasat shenanigans that apparently happened a very long time ago. We also find a bunch of bloodstones all throughout the map, which apparently they are like little mini nukes that can happen and they all explode and left massive craters. But I will also say is that the northern section of this zone really does capture that wild aesthetic. Like I really feel that this zone has like that northern exposure grassland. Well done, ArenaNet. Well, Madam Gracifer has now given us a new task to gather information on the sickly wildlife, basically those who have been corrupted by the Blightbringer. Okay, say less, Queen. You give me a free Trank gun and tell me to go wild? Pfft. Oh, all right. After I finish up darting every small woodland creature that Sonic would try to save, I then am sent to slow the expanding Titan Blight in the Festering Basin, which is like, yay, the very best feature of every single Guild Wars 2 expansion is more renowned hearts. Everyone loves hearts. And like this one, this one takes so long. It took me like 20 minutes to gather up all the required experience in this area to satisfy. I take my time to meet up with Sven from the CDG Guild and do a Blight Riff, which I probably get knocked down because I'm terrible. <laughs> Well, after some more deliberation, Poised Arrow shoots us a message and says that he has found the path of another Titan. And this one's perhaps more dangerous and very different than the one that we already fought. Also, my character drops the line, don't get your paws dirty. <laughs> That's a very good pun. Okay, so we got a huge reveal that the mentor of the Chieftain's son is actually a long-lost elemental wizard god, Patient Sorrow. Not only was she hiding who she was, she was also stifling all of her magic not to draw suspicion. And as such, the story pickup does kind of feel sad for Pokey and Stoic in this case. Stoic is trying to do everything he can to keep his son alive, and Poised Arrow really just doesn't know what to believe anymore. And it's all kind of sad because I just got the sinking feeling that one of those two are not going to make it to the end of the story here. I'm, I'm just calling. I hope I'm wrong. Also, as I am getting into these two zones, I really have to say I like the aesthetic here. The aesthetic is just amazing. It's so, so well done. Like, it really does feel like a northern wildlands in both the lowland shore as well as Janthir Sintry. I like both of them for what their purpose is. It's really, really cool. I also noticed that as I'm logging in for my daily rewards, I'm going to be looking to get this Falling Star Spear set, apparently. 
but there's a quest that goes along with it and apparently there's a pretty cool infusion so we're gonna have to check that out if you missed any of the episodes of my Janthier Wilds playthrough, you can click this playlist here to see any of the episodes that you may have missed. Otherwise, stay caffeinated, folks. <laughs>